interesting. So I'm recording to the cloud. Hopefully that will work okay and be fine when we're done. All right, so I'm gonna start by creating a new part. So I'm gonna file new, selected part, selected okay. I wanna work in millimeter gram second. Um, I prefer to work in millimeter gram second even though I don't think very well in uh, inches. But for most things from a, a medical context, millimeters are a better unit than inches, um, just because you want fairly precise components, right? And inches are just not a very large, or inches are kind of big for inside the body kind of things. Um, for outside the body kind of things are good, but for inside the body kind of things, not so much. Um, so I would encourage you guys to get used to working in millimeter gram second. Um, so I'm gonna switch to millimeter gram second. Uh, the part I'm going to make is just going to be a, uh, a bushing for mounting a, a cylinder, a rod, right? Um, and you can put a bearing into this, or you can just put it as a, a straight bushing. Um, but basically, a hole through a plate, right? And the reason I'm using this as an example for machining is a lot of times the cost of machining a component is a function of the complexity of the part. So. If you are machining a component, you usually are having that part be reasonably simple, right? Um, or at least not very big. You can't have it be fairly complicated, but you're gonna have a more expensive manufacturing process to pay for that additional complexity, right? So additional complexity costs you more money, right? Um, and again, with a lot of CNC control, that makes it a little bit less true, um, but it still holds out. Uh, where's my part here? I'm gonna download this and open it in a separate window so I don't have to like figure out which one it's in each time. There we go. So I want to rewatch though. I want to rewatch this where I'll post it up on Canvas after it's done. It's recording right now. So yeah. Um, again, so I'll post this to Canvas. If you're watching this, you don't need to hear me say I'm posting to Canvas. But for those who are in person now, we'll post it to Canvas after that. So I want to start off uh, in a part I'm going to machine with the simplest geometry possible. And I would actually encourage you guys, if you are thinking about, hey, I'm gonna be making this out of a piece of stock material, start with the stock material. So in this part, I'm just gonna start with a blank uh, rectangular prism. So I'm gonna go into my sketch on the front plane because I like the front plane. I'm gonna use the center point rectangle. If when in doubt, use center point rectangle. There's really no disadvantage to having the center point rectangle there. It's going to put your part to the center of mass is closer to the origin of the part. It's also going to give you more planes you can use as reference planes for future geometry later on. So I don't know why corner rectangle is the default. Make center rectangle the place you go to if you're going to start off with a prismatic geometry. The center rectangle, I'm going to drag that out. And I'm going to give it a 100 millimeter width and a 60 millimeter height. That's all I'm gonna do on this one. So 100 millimeters wide, 100. Again, clicking on the horizontal bottom line to place the 100 at width, and then the vertical top line to give it a 60 millimeter height. And that is a fully defined sketch. I am done. Starting off easy is almost always a good place to start. Uh, I'm gonna extrude this to a width of 20 millimeters. You guys see the 20 there? So I'll go to extrude. And just like the center part rectangle, oftentimes it's a good idea to use a mid-plane extrude. Because again, that's going to put the, in this case, the center of mass of the part is going to be coincident with the origin, right? Which is super nice for me going forward. And I will also have the front plane going through the middle of my part. So if I want to do any mirroring for symmetry, I already have a plane there. So does that make sense? I don't have questions as to why I'm using the center point rectangle or the mid-plane extrude. Okay, so it's obvious to everybody we won't spend time on it. Now I've got my block. That would be the block of material that I'm starting with. That's my work, right? So what do I wanna to do to make this into a functioning part? First of all, I need the hole for my shaft. So that's probably gonna be a drilling operation, right? In the middle of my part. So I'm gonna go back to the front plane. I'm gonna sketch on the front plane. I'm just gonna make a hole that's the right size. In this case, it's a 20 millimeter diameter hole. And I can find a drill bit that's a 20 millimeter diameter. As long as I don't need to be super, super accurate, then that could be fine as, you know, uh, pretty much a single operation, drilling out that hole. Not very 
deep. It has a length to depth ratio, right? I do extrude cut. I'm gonna do through all both. A length to depth ratio of one it is 20 millimeters wide and it is 20 millimeters deep. So that should be an easy hole to cut, right? If it was one millimeter in diameter and 20 millimeters deep, that would be a very difficult hole to cut, right? So keep that in mind as you're working on things and how you might get around some of those effects later on, right? But with just the hole, I can't really mount this to anything. So I have to have some kind of flange or piece, right? So I'm going to add to this to make it mountable. So what am I going to have to do? If I want to mount this vertically, I have to have some holes that kind of go down in, you know, kind of down from this direction. Uh, and I don't want those to go through the entire part because make it a really, really long bolt, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off a portion of the material, right? Which I would probably do just in a mill. I'm going to cut off straight sides. Straight sides are the easiest thing to cut. So that's how I want to start on this. So I'm going to go back to my front plane. I'm going to sketch. Uh, and this time I'm actually going to use the, actually, let's not use this. We'll use a special thing. Um, one of the things that's important to know is if I'm doing cuts in SOLIDWORKS, if I start on the edge of the part and I end on the edge of the part, I don't actually have to draw a closed cross section. So I'll show you guys that. I'm just going to draw two lines, a horizontal line and a vertical line. And again, really important that I'm starting on the edge of the part and I'm ending on the edge of the part. So this is a series of lines that connect to the edges of the part. And then I want the height of this to be 10 millimeters to give me some uh, room to be able to put that mounting hole in. And then I think I wanted the width to be 20. Yeah, the width to be 20 millimeters. So I'll make this width here 20 millimeters. All right, and that gives me some room to work. And again, this is just two lines. A vertical line and a horizontal line. And then what I can do is I can go to my features, I can do extruded cut. I'm gonna do through all both. And it shows me the kind of the plane that's being cut through. And I can accept that and it cuts out the part. So again, as long as I have a series of lines that are non-self intersecting, you can't double back on itself, right? It's one line starting at one part of the part, going across to another part of the part, that will be acceptable for a cut extrude. I could have also just drawn a square, right? Using the corner, corner rectangle tool that actually probably would have been faster because it would just been two clicks instead of three. Um, but again, showing you guys a little bit more things you can do in solvers, right? Anyone need me to do that again real quick? My hands? No? All right, then I'm gonna mirror this to the other side. So I'm just gonna click on the cut extrude two, hold control. Click on my right plane. Again, because I use that center point rectangle that's right in the middle of my part. With those two objects selected, I'll click on the mirror tool. It automatically knows that, hey, you have a plane and you have a cut extrude. So I know where to put those into the options here for the feature. And I can accept that. And I get the opposite cut. I am doing the mirror here at this point to show you that this would be a separate operation. So the first time I started off the blank, I drilled a hole, I milled out the side, I milled out the other side, right? I'm making my model tree match the manufacturing processes because a lot of times that helps you think about how you're actually gonna produce the parts. Make sense? All right, I wanna put a hole on the center of each of those flanges. So I'm gonna sketch on the top face of that bottom kind of face right there. Go into my sketch tool, click on the sketch option. I'm actually going to make a center line that goes diagonally across the corners of these two pieces. Because that is probably the easiest way of finding the center of a face, of a rectangular face. So the midpoint of a center line going from the corners of a face will give me the center of that face. And then I'm gonna make the circle have its center on that midpoint and give it a diameter of eight millimeters. And you can see that that circle is now fully defined. And regardless of how big I make that flange on the side, if I change it later, it's always gonna stay in the center. I didn't have to add dimensions saying that it's you know, 10 millimeters up from the side and 10 millimeters over from the left. Saved me a little bit of time right there. I know we only got uh, a little less than 10 minutes left in class. So we're just gonna finish this up. Um, and again, it's recording. So you guys can look at it on the video if you want. Um, I'm gonna extrude cut that hole. Again, I'm just gonna do a through all. Um, unless there's a reason to not use through all, then I suggest you go ahead and use through all, right? Uh, unless you want a specific depth of hole, through all is the option you wanna use. 
I'm going to mirror that the exact same way I did the previous one, holding control on the right plane, mirroring that. Again, just two drilling operations done on those two pieces. Um, I could have also used the hole wizard tool, um, but for using dowel holes, basically holes that have a constant diameter, just a, a straight, so many size diameter, doesn't make much difference. Right? This is a perfectly functional part. If you don't care about the mass of the part, should I do anything else to this? No, right? Um, if this is a mounting block that's going to go onto a piece of machinery, right? And it doesn't matter if it weighs five pounds or 10 pounds, I shouldn't waste time removing more material from this part. Now, if it's going to go on to something that's going to be moving around where weight matters, then I want to remove more material from this to make it more efficient, right? But right now, this is fine. Also, if I'm making this for something that's going to go on to a piece of machine equipment, having that additional material, especially the flat edges, makes it easier for people to add more things onto it later. I could drill and put holes onto the top, onto the top of this if I wanted to mount that travadile, right, or some other piece of equipment onto here. The extra material is often useful later on in that product's life. Whereas if I spend more time making more cuts to this, I'm making it less useful and using my time, energy, and money. Um, but if you did need to make this lighter, the next thing you'd probably want to do is, is fill it out the top because we have a lot of extra material on here. So I can add a, a 30 millimeter radius fillet on the top and make that a nice round. And then I might want to uh, mill out some pockets on the face of this to basically make it hollow. I only want to do that from one side from machine components because if I have to flip it over, and then you would again the opposite side, that flipping over is gonna induce more error and more kind of problems. So I'm gonna cut it out from just one side of the part. So I'm gonna sketch on the face here on the outside of the part. I'm gonna offset from that face three millimeters. And I have to come in because I wanna cut out. And I'll accept that. And I actually don't want these flanges to get cut out because my hole for my bolt, it's gonna go through those. So I'm gonna delete these back two lines. And then I'm gonna move these edges over and just kind of combine these two points. So I'll merge those two points. I'm gonna do the same thing on the opposite side in case you missed that. Well, also, cause I need to. I'm just gonna drag this point over here. You notice that right now, this point on the end is black. When I move it, it loses the constraint of being an offset from that entity. And then I can add a relations to it. So if you're saying, hey, it won't let me do anything with that point, try dragging it first to tell SolidWorks that, hey, I want that point to be able to move, and then you can add more relations and dimensions to it. I also want to have a, uh, the same kind of thickness on here, so I'm not reducing the bearing surface for the inner portion of that. So I'm going to do an offset uh, from this circle, give me the same thing on the inside. And then I will cut extrude this. And I'm just going to make it a, tenth, a depth of 10, so it goes halfway through the part. Now, you might say, hey, that's pretty similar to the shell tool that we've used before, but I have more control over the cross section in this instance than I do in the shell tool. If I wanted to do the shell tool with that, I would have to specify a variable thickness shell, which can get fairly complicated, and that cross-sectional sketch was fairly simple to make. So again, you're going to be making kind of decisions as to how you want to look as you're going through. Now, with this specific configuration, I've lost a lot of material, which is good for weight. But again, removing that material is going to cost me more time on the mill. Also, with this one, that center portion is not very well supported. So what you might want to do is add a rib uh, to better support the center piece uh, while still also removing material. And so SolidWorks has a really nice rib tool for basically making a web across anything. And all you need to do is draw the line that indicates where the web needs to go. Um, so I'm going to sketch on that front face again, and I'm just going to draw four lines going across this part. And these lines don't actually need to touch the edges, although I like to draw them touching because it's more convenient and it makes it more obvious, but I'll draw, draw one not touching just to show that effect. I do need them to not go across the surfaces. They need to not go past the faces that I'm actually cutting to. Um, and then I'll use my rib tool and I'll make them three millimeters wide. It may complain because I have some that go all across and some that don't. That's what it does. 
No, she doesn't care. So again, those sketches became those ribs very, very quickly. All I had to do is specify the location of the rib um, and how wide they were. It is very important that for that rib tool that those sketches start on the face where you want the rib to start, right? So if they're not at the right height, like if I were to draw those on the front plane, um, that wouldn't have worked, right? So I had to draw them on this top surface. The other thing is how difficult is it gonna be for me to manufacture those pockets? I guess an easy or hard? Anyone think it'd be easy to cut those pockets out with the mill? If I were to give you a piece of material and say, hey, go cut those pockets out for me, you'd be okay, yeah, no problem. Some people think it'd be hard. Anyone want to say why it would be hard? What's the hardest part of going to be to cut those pockets? I'll give you a hint. Why would that be hard to cut? What am I using to make cuts on the mill? Yeah, I'm using a, a cylindrical bit, right? How do I get a square corner on the inside of a pocket using a cylindrical bit? I would have to turn the bit sideways and like cut with a thing or have a really fancy tool. They do make fancy tools that actually have multiple like movements, like a planetary gear set with blades spinning on the middle for doing square holes. But you don't want to do that. Also, you know, that's going to be a stress concentration inside your part. You want to round those out, right? So take your fillet, pick a reasonable size diameter, like maybe three, right? And then apply that same diameter to all of the corners of your pockets. My phone is telling me we're at a class time is over. This is kind of a pain sucking all the corners. You guys get the idea though. You apply the round to all the corners and then that's going to be a lot easier to manufacture um, than if you were to not have those rounds. It's important that you have all of those corners be the same round because then you can use the same bit to do all of the cuts. And the bigger you make that, the larger bit you can use, generally the faster you can make the cuts. Although it's also a function of the depth, you're probably not gonna use a, you know, a 10 millimeter radius milling bit to cut a hole that's only one and a half millimeters deep. But this one's 10 millimeters deep, so having a 10 millimeter radius would probably be okay, right? Again, you want to use the full length of that bit if you can. So um, I'm going to add the rest of the fillets to these just to finish it off. But if you guys want to head out, we are out of class time. Um, and I'm just doing this so you, if the video um, has the things, if you guys have questions and want to ask those, feel free to shout them out. Or I'll see you all in class on Wednesday. I'll have, I'll have you guys turn in the parts um, for the whole week on class on Friday. Um, I don't have a submission set up for that yet. So just make sure you save your parts somewhere where you have access to them. What's that? Uh, so I'll upload it, upload it on Canvas probably tomorrow. Um, and I'll just put it on the week's lesson page. So it'll go up um, somewhere on here. It'll probably honestly like right here next to this mounting block of TDF. Mounting block and then space in video. This is a new one, never done this one before. So that's why there's not a video already there. All right, so that's the finished part. And I'm gonna stop the recording. Yes.